Hey guys, how's it going? Masterbox here. Welcome on back to another episode of the Leeds United career mode in FIFA 21. We are still in the transfer window, of course. We've only begun season two. We had played our first Premier League game of the season. Obviously, we got that 3-1 win against Sheffield. If you didn't see the previous episode, you can go back and take a look. But first game we'll play today, Man City. Then we've got Wolves. Then we've got Manchester United. So we got Sheffield United out of the way. Now we've got a pretty decent little tough uh, group of games in this month. We made an unbelievable amount of signings in the previous episode, right? And we now have what? Let's count them. One, two, uh, three, four new signings. Th four new players in the starting 11 this season. And then there's like one on the bench. We made an insane amount of signings in the last episode. Like we got Tosin Adara Bayo, who is a bench player now, a backup center back for us. But aside from him, we've got one player here. We've got two three, four new players in my starting 11 that we all signed in this one transfer window. Three of these players are all free agents that we just got for basically nothing, just paid their wage. And if we need to sign anyone else, I literally have a shortlist that is absolutely jam-packed so much that I think I have a position for every single uh, place in my starting 11, like honestly. And if we do need to sign any other players, then I've got such a stacked shortlist. I literally have a bunch of players in almost every single possible position. And a lot of these players are also free agents too. Players that, again, I could just get for nothing. I feel like at this stage, though, I've got a team that I'm pretty happy to start this season with. And we might make some transfers potentially in, but it just depends. I mean, look, we got about 17.5 mil after we sold a handful of other players that you know, we pretty much didn't really need. We're getting into their 30s and we're probably going to start dropping off. So I just wanted to maximize the return that we could have got for them. First game of this episode, though, will be the Manchester City game. Looks like they didn't have the best start. They're sitting in 12th. Hopefully we can compound their poor start to the season. Playing at home at Ellen Road, they have got their ridiculously strong starting 11 with Sergio Ramos now in it, for crying out loud. They've signed Fabian from Napoli, and Gabriel Jesus is now starting ahead of Aguero. Jesus is probably up to like mid-80s now. Aguero probably would be about the same if he's still even there. So this is going to be, again, a pretty tough game, I would imagine. I wonder if Jack Harrison's going to be involved for Manchester City in some way today, if he might be on the bench after we opted not to sign him back, I wonder. It would be pretty interesting to see him on the opposite side of things after the first season. And again, crazy that Ramos is now playing for Manchester City like this. But again, I didn't expect to see Thiago Silva playing for Chelsea. So those signings like that, you know, they, they can happen. And gosh, even Zach Steffen, of course, that we signed from Manchester City right at the beginning of the career mode, for crying out loud. It would appear that he's not on the bench, though Aguero is, Torres is, as well as uh, Deli Alli, who had a pretty ridiculous last season, scored a decent amount of goals. And we are off and rolling. First real challenge of this Premier League season coming up. Well, that's a deep one. Get in front! They do that all the time. He started in front and just moves to... They always go behind their attacker. Watch Kosh here, I think, is the one I'm controlling. Or maybe it actually is Ben White. He's in front, and then when they go up for a better... When they go up for the header, he goes behind the defender. I tried so fucking hard to keep him in front, but they just always do that. By default, it feels... They just give up a free fucking goal all the time when they do that. And I can't fucking stop it. I literally was calling it while the ball was in midair. Oh, he's going to walk right behind him when he's already in front. Fuck me, man. Great slide. Oh, magnificent. Just need to get players available when I win the ball back. This is not bad. It's a tight angle. It is. It's off of the... Oh, the bar. Touch. In the box again. Cousins. Look at the space. I would have played it short, but fuck me, that is just, again, going to shit. Costa falls over. It's so unclean at the moment. Puig, how in the world does Angelino stay in front of him there? Oh, my God. And just up the other end, they go and grab the second. We stopped the Sterling attack, only for him to cut it back into De Bruyne and to have him whack it. Past Stefan at the near post. I was nervous that Sterling was going to get the shot off. The drag back was there, but we stayed in the way. And when I'm trying to drag someone to get in front to block the De Bruyne shot, nothing happening. Ben White, I'm not in control of. He's actively running away from it. No one is trying to help Zach Stefan at all. And I already know he's not going to make the save. Oh, taking too fucking long now. 
Guys, every every single attack is just being wasted right now. I can't create one good thing. No, oh, he's in. He's in here again. We're playing such a high line. The dink. Oh, Zach Steffen, you are absolutely fucking giving me no help. But again, we play such a high line naturally, and I'm just getting exploited now twice on the counter. This is just not going at all the way I'd hoped it would. Three fucking nil. We've conceded three. The first goal shit me off so fucking much. It's just this game being an absolute piece of shit to work with on defense. And then Rodrigo hitting the bloody bar. That's intercepted. That shot from early with Cousins was missed. If they grab a fourth, I'll be so done. Good interception, but we won't have time to counter and grab one goal. Not that any attack that we made, apart from that absolute last one with Cousins, resulted in any sort of clear-cut fucking goal-scoring opportunity. Just a horrific first half. Played so unbelievably well in the first game against Sheffield United, only to now start up another game, another episode, and have it begin like this is just awful. Oh, hello. Oh, referee, you are kidding me, man. Even that is a foul. I can't get one thing to go my way. Oh, again. Don't let them do it to us again. Switch to fucking Phillips. Oh, my God. This game is just absolutely... Oh, it's going to be a four. Yeah, it is. Oh, thank God he missed. Jesus Christ. Still not really getting the run going forward that I need. Rodrigo now should have a chance. If he settles and shoots and saved Edison, we can't score today. Oh, I don't like this. Showing too much of it to Rodri, but he still has it here. Costa. Good. Oh, you fucking... Oh, my God! What is this game right now? For real, what was that through ball? What was that? There was just... It's everything is shit. Hernandez is in the game. Move it out there to the right side. That's... Oh, brilliantly done. Costa, for the love of God, mate. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. It's too late for us to get anything from this game, but we score one. Finally, a decent attack that presents an absolutely near unmissable opportunity. Held the cost of finishing. Like, you know, good stuff and all, but it's not going to change the outcome, unfortunately. Yeah, they're just literally, like, for ever since kickoff, they have just kept possession. They keep playing it around the back. I'm not able to get the ball off them. It is mad. If they want, they could literally pass the ball around for the whole damn game and you wouldn't even get close to getting the ball off them. That's how unbelievable they move the ball. Oh, goodness. Come on. Just end it. My Lord, that was just painful to end. Just that, that was painful to end the game like that. But all right, 3-1 and it's just disastrous day. Oh, fucking horrible. Starts with that first goal that Ramos let in. Like, again, Ben White just... It's not even, I'm not going to go off at him. It's just, it happens all the time in this game. You'll have a defender that you're marking with a ball whipped in from a corner. You're in front of him, and they will just, by default, just slide in right behind and let your let their man get in front so that way they can always win the header. I try so much to keep them at the front, but they always gravitate toward the back. It's so fucking bullshit. So we start off today's episode with a loss to Man City. That is unfortunate. I'd like to at least to have gotten a point, but by the time we scored our first, there was no way we were going to get anything from the game. Just annoying. Really not a good day. We have a game about six days later, a transfer offer for Rodrigo, and it is, from of all people, a man that scored over 50 goals in a Premier League season. you think Real Madrid and Barca would come knocking, but it's Hertha Berlin offering, to be honest with you, a staggering... 56 something million dollars. That is pretty damn good for a 30 year old 82 rated striker, but not good enough for what we know he's capable of doing. I don't even want to delegate this one, dude. I would not sell Rodrigo for, uh, well, maybe. I would not sell Rodrigo for like 100 million. Honestly, I after the last season that he had, I'll happily ask, just because I'm curious, but there's no way I'm actually going to sell him, and there's no way Hertha Berlin would have that much money. You don't have to worry, Rodrigo, mate. Your future at this club is in very, very safe hands. We've got a player that we have in our shortlist being taken away, or most likely going somewhere else, and another player that I'm looking to just let go of. I know this isn't probably how you pronounce it, but Bogus. <laughs> uh, Mateusz Bogus. Uh, I don't know, whatever. He's 19 years of age from Poland. He probably has some potential, but... 62, nearly 20. Uh, I just have so many other players ahead of him in the midfield position. I just, 
I, I just need to clear up some space. We've got Youth Academy players coming through that are probably younger and about the same overall anyway, with higher potentials. But we move from that awful showing against Man City to hopefully what will be a much, much better day out against Wolverhampton Wanderers today. We have got a reasonably strong side. They've got James at right back. So they've signed Reese James, I believe that is. Their center backs look different. They've got Yerry Mina and Savage. So two decent new center backs that they've picked up there. Midfield of Madison, for crying out loud. Like, there are some nice names in that Wolves team. New names, but still a pretty damn good team. This is where we bounce back right here, okay? A tough game coming up, but I think a decent opportunity to hopefully grab three points. What are we going to be able to get from the game today? I mean, a much, much better performance is going to be needed. We already saw this Wolves team, how they're... They've made a lot of new signings, and yeah, that probable lineup looks like it's going to be bang on. James Madison and Paulinho now in the midfield, plus a front three that can cause problems, plus a decent back line. With it being five at the back, it will be tough. This could be quite the uh, little predicament in this game. That's all I'm going to say. Great tackle from Kosh, getting stuck in there. Or oh, that slide didn't work out well for him. And a ball up the middle is brilliant. Rodrigo, that's a heavier touch. It doesn't matter. It is showing a lot of it to Rui Patricio. But he puts it away for the first goal of the day. Look at this. The slide from uh, number 20. I think that is Paulinho to try to stop it from getting through. It didn't. Great through ball from, I believe that was Puig there. In for Rodrigo. So we have a new Spanish... Uh, partnership, you know, Hernandez on the bench, we've replaced him with Puig, and he is still doing just as good as Hernandez was for me last season in feeding that man. Let's go, he's got the first goal in the opening 10 minutes, and that's so nice to be leading nice and early. Oh, White made the intercept, no one's going to fucking get a rhythm. Oh, what happens there? I think White goes and makes like an intercept, and then he like stumbles. And that means two centre-backs ended up going for the loose ball. No one went with Jimenez. Looks like that's exactly what happened here. Look, there it is. Both centre-backs go for it. Kosh is staying in the way of, is that Paulinho or is that Adama or whoever it is that feeds Jimenez. It means that no one's there with him. Come on, man. We just took the lead already giving it away. Costa. Rodrigo. Poussons. Oh, the back heel is a bit unnecessary, but it could prove... Oh, beautiful! Costa's now got himself another goal in back-to-back -back Premier League games, and we were thinking of maybe finding a replacement for him. Number two for Costa this season. He didn't grab too many last season either, so good promising signs early on. Ball up over the top. He's not going to get in behind Yerry Mina. Can he make it awkward for him? Yeah, I don't think we'll get away with this yet. Wow, that is fucking so ballsy. How do they get away with that? Oh, Phillips. No, nope, but right back for Connor Cody. You will just try as hard as you want, but you just won't get it off them. We are actually past stoppage time now. We just need the clearance. All these fucking, fucking aerial balls. I swear to God, we just can't clear the ball ever. How on earth has this got as far back as it has? The ball is there for Phillips, for... Kosh, who looks like he's just standing at it. Yedlin is not in front of Dan Potence either. Like, this just seems insane how, one, maybe the keeper could come out and grab it, even though he really shouldn't need to, because that ball should just be getting cleared. I'm pressing B. I'm spamming it. Nothing can do nothing about it. This is just fuck, man. The way that we just keep conceding these shit goals like this. I don't ever think I've conceded such awful goals in a FIFA before like this so consistently. It is just speaking a fucking thousand words about what it's like to defend in this game. It just feels like every single game. You know that all your hard work and everything that you do to try to get yourself into the game, get yourself in front, it just gets pissed away in the worst, most stupid manners possible all the time. And you just have to live with it. We have Rodrigo. I don't know. Still no. Rodrigo maybe now. Chance for him to shoot and that is... For the, you know, position he was in to generate that much power, it's not bad. He had the side on goal, just a bit wide. Is he on? Oh my god, he was. Great save from Zach Stefan. Oh my lord. Where is Yedlin? Where in the world is Yedlin? Dan Potence on the cutback. Kosh just rah, has to take care of it, I guess. Where was fucking Yedlin? Around the outside, just going for it like this. Sessegnon. 
Could try a deep ball. That's not deep enough, though. Oh, Cousins. How about a bit of fucking just intellect to go and run to where the loose ball is from the AI? Why is the pass not? Oh, my fucking God! This game is awful! I don't get why everyone says it's so good! Could this fucking game, for once, listen to me? Cheaply turned over again. Phillips, what? What brilliance from Captain Phillips. Rodrigo! Rodrigo! That is the cheekiest and easiest goal we could hope to score. Captain Phillips with a big turnover and Rodrigo is just instantaneously in a position to just running behind that back line and score. More of this, please. Literally, just the through ball in, sending Rodrigo on his way, and that is perfectly put away. Bottom corner, oh, Patricio with not a hope in the world of stopping it. Have we toiled in this game and suffered again, but maybe three points might happen. Maybe. We still have five minutes to see off Wolves and try not to concede anything. Please just deal with this. In it comes. The header from Adama, the deflection. It's, oh my God. If that goes in, I am going to go, I would have gone nuts. The header from Adama takes a deflection off of Phillips and just went wide. It still means it's a corner. Stay in front. That's a deep ball. Get in front. Header from Mina. Every fucking corner in. They find an option. We're never in front. And I can't control them and get them to move. By the grace of Yeri Mina's header, we're going to survive and win this game. But I just am so fucking over defending corners. Come on. Come on. Nah, come on. Thank you. Oh, wow. I, I can't express how fucking shit, oh my god, how fucking Im absolutely over already FIFA 21 I am. Just when it comes to defending. It's literally every aspect of it. Every aspect of defending in FIFA 21 is painstakingly just terrible. It is so terrible. But I think today, we just got highlighted that any cross in, any corner in, your players just don't fucking do anything. They're awful. They will always go to the back of whoever it's aimed for and just let them head the ball free. You just have to hope that they miss. Every single time I try to move a player from a corner and try to get them to go somewhere, they literally, they don't listen. They stand still when you're trying to get them to move. They don't care. They won't ever get the position in front of their defender, in front of the, who they're marking. It just is awful. It is so awful. Oh my god, when is the patch coming? Do we? Surely they know by now that the defending is fucking atrocious. And they have to do something. Oh, you wouldn't have thought I actually won the game after how that oh, just shambolic affair went. Uh, but somehow we did. And we have another week to go till the Manchester United game. And then we're pretty much done for the transfer window. Oh my goodness. And we have an offer for Adam Forshaw. A player I'm probably going to sell as well if they actually do... You know, if the deal does go through. But Rodrigo, 57 million is what they'd be willing to pay. That is still not even close to what I would be willing to sell him for. Nope, sorry. I mean, if we're looking at what his value is, the fact that he's 30, 57 mi I would 100% take that if we don't know what this player really truly is. That 82 rating is a lie. It is a gigantic lie. He is worth so much more than 57 million regardless of his valuation, but Adam Forshaw, I am trying to let this man go. I've accepted one offer already, but hopefully this one will go through. A little bit of player training done there. We have a transfer offer for one of my players here, the uh, backup goalkeeper that I'm not looking to let go of. Got some players leaving on international duty soon as well, and we have a bunch of games rescheduled for what I presume to be, of course, the Europa League. That means we've been given our group, and would you believe one of the teams in our group is none other than the team that wants to buy our star Rodrigo, Hertha Berlin. Well, no, they're not going to get him, especially now they've been placed in our group. Rangers are going to be in there, and Dundalk as well, who I think are like an Irish team, if I'm wrong. No, I don't know, maybe, it, it, regardless, that is, uh, that is our group. We're in Group I. Wouldn't that be nice? Anyway... Final game we played today, Manchester United completing a blockbuster affair of games that we've had. They've all been absolutely just piss takes. I have been so frustrated throughout all of them, it feels, but we have one last game to get through, and it looks like they're really starting to take a, 
uh, Bayern apart. They're taking the best of Bayern, aren't they? They've got Nabry in. They've got Davies, who I can only assume that is the Alfonso Davies with Juan Bissaka, Varane at centre-back alongside Maguire. They've got a midfielder, Fernandes, Pogba, Van der Beek, and then Martial up top, maybe not the greatest striker in the world, but Rashford at the left midfield position. Like, Jesus Christ, that's a ridiculously good team. Somehow, I bet Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will turn them into a mess, or just the club in general being a mess will mean that they'll finish fourth or fifth, but just insane, that team right there. I mean, I don't know. I don't understand why a team like that can't contend if a team like that were to exist. Regardless, though, we're going to get this one underway. Manchester United did finish third last season, of course, so they are in with a shot, and they did come close to winning the league, to be fair. They weren't too far off of Liverpool. Let me tell you then, with signings like the one that they have made, I swear, they might be in with a bit of a shot of potentially winning it all. They haven't lost a game yet this season. Hopefully, they're about to lose their first. Arsenal are currently sitting in the damn relegation zone right now. Wow, that's pretty heavy. It is probably too early, but just the fact that even at any point in the season you see any of the top six in the relegation zone, it always makes you wonder, regardless of how many games we have left to go. But I fear after two games that have been quite difficult for me, uh, we might genuinely be on for, oh god, this one could be on paper, just, off, just as if not maybe harder than the Man City game. Who knows what's going to happen today. Middle, Rodrigo getting absolutely hammered from all directions. Varane's got it. Costa down the wing. Do I cut it and have a shot? I might just try to win the corner. Or hold it up a bit. Oh, what a cutback. What a goal, Rodrigo. These two are combining now brilliantly. It's not just Ricky Pewing anymore. It is Helda Costa bombing it down the wing. Sessegnon's barely had any involvement since we've signed him. It's actually Helda Costa that's probably my best winger so far. That gap was just there. He went all the way, all the way until he was about to run out of space. Cutting it back with real power, but Rodrigo does not matter. It's still has slammed it. He has got five goals now already in his, what, fourth Premier League game. So he is just as good as he was last season. It's a beautiful thing to see. We've got the lead again early. Please get rid of the ah, ball. Fernandez, no. Oh. My God, it's happened again. I'm just scoring and then conceding immediately. Kosh with the tackle. I'm just trying to get him to pass, pass, pass the fucking ball. Fernandez takes it off of his feet. Again, it happens too much in this game. You make a tackle. You just don't get enough time to just get rid of it. That is a hell of a ball. Kosh sliding. Gets it to Zach Steffen. That's actually brilliant. That is risky. Pogrob turned it over. Kosh sliding in, making another tackle. Again, you see the press. But if we can get beyond it, as Phillips, I think, just... Phase through the referee right there. My goodness. Still trying to move it forward here. Puig. Up the middle here. Oh, look at this. Absolute acres for Cousins. 2-1 again. We lead once more. Counter-attack not going as quick as I would like. But he still manages to get an absolutely gorgeous opportunity to score. That is ridiculous. Look at this humongous gap up the middle of their mouth. Like, that is ridiculous. If my defense had been split open like that, I'd be fuming. I'd be absolutely livid. But it's just it's just FIFA 21. The defense is horrid for not just me, not for the user, but for the AI as well. So you just it 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 goes back and forth. Fuck. Oh great save. Great save, Zach Steffen. It'll do. It will do. Cousins. Left side. Finally we've got sort of a bit of space for Sessignon to move this thing forward. A ball in there. Rodrigo. A ball in here. And a goal! Another one for Costa! I was thinking of sliding it across to Puig, but in the end, Costa converts all on his own. Getting Sessegnon going down the left-hand side. We just cut it in again. I was w hoping that Cousins would make a run more toward the middle of the goal than out wide, but it's all right because we had Costa. We had a really tight angle to feed him through that ball, but he managed to get it. My man's going to get the exact same amount of goals he got last season in what feels like only 10 games. He is just getting amongst it so much right now. It's incredible to see. Hey, any chance? Any chance? Kosh, what are you doing? Oh my god, I was just expecting the shot. Finally, the tackle. Oh my god. How in the world did we get away with that? Again, like I spoke about before. How sometimes you just have a gap open up right down the middle. Now we're going here. 
Sessegnon is off. Going a long way. Going the whole way, is he? No. Chance to get it through. Shot here. Costa. And it is the, it is the fourth. Costa's got himself another one today. From being so convinced I was about to concede and it would be 3-2, we end up getting ourselves the fourth goal after the lucky deflection. Hell to Costa, man. Unbelievable. The ball's now just finding him. He's got everything going his way. That goal right there, I think, potentially wins us the game too. Because if we went into the half 3-1, you know, there's still the opportunity for Manchester United to get back into it. But three goals we're leading by, scoring four in 45 minutes. We have to go on now to win this thing. I mean, surely there's no excuse, no, no matter what this game could throw at us. Rodrigo's going to make his move. He won't get in behind here. There's a massive gap. Cousins is going to run into it. This just feels too easy. Too easy! It's a fifth. What is happening? Manchester United are just as shambolic in FIFA 21 as they seem to be in real life, even with all the reinforcements they've picked up. And if the Helder Costa goal didn't seal it, this one has. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Sessegnon. Will he finally get his first, or will we do the right thing? Oh, that's not the right thing. What is that, Sessegnon? That seems like a simple sweat. How do you not pull that off? Oh, switch back to him. Oh, my God. I have to control my center backs now. Oh, God. This is disastrous. And, yeah, there is the other one. The second I, the second the game wouldn't switch back to Phillips and I had to control my center backs, that's immediately when I knew we were toast. Well, I still think we're going to win the game today, but two goals that we've leaked, of course, because even when it seems like everything is going your way, you'll still concede two, three goals in a game anyway. Well, it looked like it was going to be an absolute slaughter, like a 6-1, 7-1 win. In the end, it's going to be 5-2 with only 30 seconds to go. What a day out it has been. We'll just boot this thing forward, and that is the end of the game. After two minutes only, despite so many goals being scored, it finishes Leeds 5, Manchester United 2. Big, big result there. Huge win. Finally, we've gotten back into... Oh, no, we did win the, we did win the Wolves game before. It genuinely felt like we didn't uh, prior because of how frustrating it was. But what a dominant display here. Five goals against Manchester United. I was concerned this would be one of the toughest games that we had, but no, it was nothing like the sort. We still conceded two, but it was far from the frustration that I had to deal with in the previous game. Wow, um, here's a very interesting thing that I've just only noticed now. We just played Manchester United, okay? And then advance one day ahead, Paul Pogba is going to Real Madrid for 110 million. He His last game for Manchester United was a 5-2 thumping. He had that game and he was like, nah, fuck this. I'm off to Real Madrid. Literally 24 hours later, he's on the plane in Madrid. Like, what is that? Madness. Anyway, one day left to go until deadline day. And at this stage, I still, even with only, uh, you know, 20-odd mil in the bank and a day to go, I just don't have anything. We got an offer from uh, four clits, should I say, from AZ. But I, I just, again, think oh, he, he is in the reserves now. And he is 31. Oh, okay. Well, he's a, he was a really nice player for me last season. He did decently. But again, he's 72, 31. He's going to drop off. We have younger players coming through. I might accept that one as well. Uh, I already said that I was going to reject this offer for him because uh, it's bloody borderline insulting. Play with that high potential. But look, anyway, I think I might leave it here just because maybe I might, in between recording this in the next episode, I might come up with one signing a... But at this stage, I think I'm probably okay. Keep in mind that we've signed already five new fresh faces this season. So uh, we have done decent bit of business. I, I just I just don't see us needing to... Like again, I was only going to probably make a signing to replace Helder Costa. But how can I drop him now when he's getting on the score sheet every game it feels? I've been saying for ages, I just need his overall to start kicking into gear and start growing. And it looks like it is now. He's up to 75. So... Brilliant scenes there. Wine Dow is up to an 80 as well. Thank you very much. Like, oh my goodness, guys. This whole team, maybe with the exceptions of possibly Yedlin, uh, are pretty much on their way to an 80 rating. It's amazing. Well, I think we can probably leave it here then. I might have some more transfer activity left in deadline day in the next episode, but we will leave it here. Thank you all for watching. In the next episode, we'll probably hopefully get Europa League going too. So stay tuned for that. And just until the next episode, my name's The Master Bucks. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you later and bye-bye.